Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraler with BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading algorithms like you see here. We've been doing this since 2003, so 20 years now for individual traders and professional institutions, which I consult with on a weekly basis. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So this here is my back-end recording system for the uh, website for the standard newsletters. So I'm going to go ahead and start get this started. Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Monday, April 3rd market newsletter. As you can see, this newsletter is divided into five major sections. And actually, before we get into the general market, I'm going to discuss uh, the systems. But as you know, this is a shortened holiday week. The U.S. cap markets are open until Thursday. They're closed on Friday. So you have a nice long three-day weekend. That's an observance of thanks of uh, Easter. Uh, quick admin note, there will not be a weekend newsletter next weekend. Steve and I will both be out of town. And um, again, shouldn't be a problem. I think it's been well over 10 years since there hasn't been a weekend newsletter. So you know, pretty rare for us not to have a newsletter, but we're both out of town, so it is what it is. Again, I hope everyone has a great holiday week, nice three-day weekend coming up, all right? And as far as the market today, it was basically a bifurcation day, and what I mean by that is, you know, the Dow was up 1%, the S&P was up 0.4%, but the NASDAQ tech area was actually down. So little rotation out of those areas, um, NASDAQ tech area has been on fire, so a little profit taking, not surprising. The market is a bit short term overbought coming in, you know, as of the close of today, but I'm not bearish, guys. I'm just maybe looking for a short term pullback. I view the weight move that we've had up as some sort of wave three, and I'm looking for a pullback being some sort of wave four, another buying opportunity. All right. Today, the ISM numbers came out. They were at 46.3, well below expectations of 47.5, and the lowest reading in three years. We've now, I think, had at least four, four or five consecutive months below 50. Remember, below 50 is contraction, so clear examples of the economy slowing. Um, nice move again in gold and precious metal stocks. They are getting a bit overbought. GDX. That's the gold miners ETF has had a phenomenal move. It, it's up near its January highs, so area for a little double top pullback. We'll see what kind of consolidation we get there. And let's go and get started here. So before we get into the meat of the newsletter, here's what I'm looking at short term. This is a two hour view of the S&P and Steve covered this in the weekend. So you can see this potential little wave count, this little inverse head and shoulder pattern, but you can see this how we have this labeled wave one, two, and then this powerful move. This is clearly some sort of wave three. There's no MACD divergence, right? We are a little overbought by the RSI, but no MACD divergence. So that suggests some sort of wave four consolidation coming, okay? And then yet another move higher, all right? Now, we'll see this wave two consolidation was about a day and a half. So I would expect a wave four to be, you know, one to two days, maybe three max, something like that. But I am looking for that to be a buying opportunity. By the way, this area, this 4080, would be a good area to watch for support. That's the previous high there in early March. Um, because this pullback wave two was uh, an eight, basically a zigzag, it's by wave of alternation, odds favor more of a coil for wave four. So again, guys, because there's no divergence, you know, because this is clearly wave three, I'm looking for a buying opportunity on a consolidation, okay? So again, I wanted to show this before we get into the other stuff in the newsletter because these newsletters are quite comprehensive and I just wanted to show you what I'm looking at here right away before we get into everything else. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to the newsletter. So... This image below, item number three. So we're going to talk about the mechanical systems. So on Friday, two of our systems went long. 
the breakout system went long for both SPY and ES. You can see it right here. We're up a little bit today, so the trade is up slightly. Again, it's as you know, those of you who have been following us, we have 21 reversion of the mean systems that we send out trade notifications for both on SPY and ES. The systems knocked it out of the park last year because of the volatility. This year, they've been a little more sublime because volatility has been less and the VIX is low. The systems do a lot better when the VIX is higher or a lot more trades. But the breakout is not a reversion of mean. I have it with those systems, but it's the name as I suggest, it buys a breakout. It'll buy into overbought conditions. You know, reverse in the mean, you're buying, it's buying a pullback and an uptrend. So these systems went long on Friday. Um, below, I added the profit curves. So overall, you can see these two, these breakout systems have decent profit curves. Next, image number four, these tables show you the uh, reversion to mean systems and the trend following systems. So the table here shows you the 21 reversion to mean systems and the breakout system. So you can see, again, the breakout triggered for both SPY and ES. All the other reversion to mean systems are in cash. They're waiting for an opportunity, a pullback or whatever. Um, now the trend following systems, the little table below, the, uh, SQ, the triple Qs, that KISS system went long on March 15th. At, so it's done a great job. It's got three higher to low trailing stops in place now. The S&P trend following went long on Friday. Um, the Dow, I think, went long today. And TLT has been long since March 13th. Okay. Next. Moving on to the KISS, uh, the KISS trend system. So image number five, here's the KISS trend system for the triple Qs. You can see how, you know, what it's done over the last, you know, eight months. Um, last year, it went long from July into August. Then it got out, hit its smart trail and stopped, stayed in cash most of the time. Took a little long between November and December, got out. Went back long in January, got out again in late February. And then it went long again on March 15th there. Again, it's not going to catch the bottom. That's not what this system does. It's trend following. It needs some sort of market reversal. And um, it conveniently went long right when these moving average ribbons were pinching, squeezing, and um, put an initial stop right there at that higher low, which was a good place. And it's so far been progressively moving that stop up. It's currently 302.80. Okay. So it's done its job. Now, the other indexes were in cash such as the s p and dow etc but one thing i've commented before recently guys is that you know maybe in the future when one of the indexes goes long you know such as the q's here went long on march 15th you could use that as a proxy to go ahead and go long the s p versus waiting for the s p to go long or if the s p goes long first you then you can go long the q's because they're all going to kind of move together it's just one thing to think about for the future, but otherwise, this was a nice entry by the KISS trend system. Next, image number six. Here's the KISS trend system for the S&P. Again, it went long on uh, Friday, so quite a bit later than the QQQ system, which went long on you know mid-March. So like I said just a couple minutes ago, you know, in the future, if you have an example where the Q trend system goes long, but the S&P hasn't, you know, I think you could consider going long some of the S&P as well, because they are going to move together. Clearly, the Q's caught a much better entry, but um, you can see how the S&P here, uh, moving average ribbons were squeezed last week, energy was building and finally released to the upside. So far, there's only one smart trailing stop here. It's still pretty wide at 39.20. Also, guys, I talk about these moving averages whenever they get wide or they pinched. Developed a new indicator here that I put on the KISS charts. It basically measures the width of the moving averages. So whenever they get really wide here, you can see the indicator. It's normalized between 0 and 100%. So it gets really wide here. gets over 80, typically wide. When it's pinched, you can see the indicator gets really oversold, maybe around 20 30%. So it's a nice... 
instead of a, just a subjective visual, it gives you kind of a gives you more of a um, objective um, mathematical view or reading of the moving average width or pinch. Also, it's important because if I build some systems with this moving average ribbon or use it as a filter, I have a means to do so now. Okay. Next, image number seven. So here's a couple charts of the ES 15 minute chart. This was shortly after the market, cash market close. Uh, but take a look at the moving average ribbons. And I love these ribbons, guys, just for simple simplicity. You could see they get, you see how wide they get? When they get so damn wide like this, prices do for a consolidation pullback. All right. It's very visually obvious, very striking. You could show anyone, you know, folks that, who don't trade the market, show them these ribbons and it would really stand out to them as well. It's just a very simple thing. But, um, but you can see the indicator here that I just talked about. You can see it gives great readings on when these ribbons get too wide or, you know, when they're pinched. Next, let's mo go and move back to the general market. So item number eight shows the index sector table, what transpired today. Again, you can see that bifurcation in the indexes with the triple, the NASDAQ area down slightly, the other areas up. As far as the major market sectors, most sectors were up today. Notable weakness was transports, banks, brokers, um, some semiconductors, utilities. Uh, U.S. dollar down a half percent today. That, of course, has been helping the precious metal area. Uh, cryptocurrencies were mostly down today. Commodities were up except for natural gas. That continues to get pummeled. Copper was down. Big gain on crude oil. You, of course, on the weekend, you heard about Saudi Arabia cutting million barrels a day. Um, that helped fundamentally that breakout. Big move in coffee there. Um, precious metals, gold up, silver down, GDX, big gain there. So the stocks continue to outperform and bonds here, TLT up about 1% today, 10 year treasury yield down. Next, item number nine shows the news, economic news calendar. Today we had the ISM, remember it came in at 46.4, um, quite a bit lower than the forecast. And uh, on Friday, despite the market being closed, we, we still have the non-farm payroll. So we'll see how that affects futures and everything else. Okay, let's go ahead and jump to the index charts. So the first chart below, item number 10, is a daily snapshot of the five key major indexes. And you can see, remember a couple weeks ago, I was showing these downtrend lines on the indexes. They have all been broken. The NASDAQ, of course, broke that trend line in early uh, to mid-March has been leading clearly. The S&P broke its trend line last week. That was bullish. The, Nat, the Dow broke its trend line last week. And of course, the IWM at the bottom had a divergent low and has been rallying up since. So everything is uptrending. Next. Moving on to the S&P 500 charts, our proxy. So here's the daily view of the S&P. One of them we've been showing this large coil. We rallied off that lower support. We had that inner coil that I discussed last time in my video last week. We broke out of that late last week and have been pushing higher. Next resistance would be the downtrend line of this coil right here. And then of course, uh, the February highs. These uh, trend line, Breaks on the 14 RSI have been absolutely fantastic. You had a recent trend line break on the RSI for a buy signal about two weeks ago on the S&P, and that is playing out now. Again, we are overbought here short term. The five length RSI, RSI is at 85%. But as I stated already, um, I am looking for a pullback to be a buying opportunity. Next. Chapter 12, here's a zoomed in daily view. Again, you can see, you know, that pullback a couple weeks ago held these move, major moving averages, 200 day, 50 day, et cetera. We've rallied up, took out the 50 day moving average, took out the downtrend line. You can see the trend line break on the RSI here. That was a nice confirmation buy, just like it was a nice confirmation sell back here in early February. And um, you can see today we're tagging this parallel channel potential resistance. Next. 
Chart number 13, here's another daily chart. Again, you can see the trend line breaks on the RSI. Here I added vertical lines just to show you. Again, it's not going to catch the top, exact top, or the exact bottom, but that's fine. Does a damn good job. Very objective. Um, so otherwise, guys, some of my targets here on the market overall, maybe in April would be, first off, retesting the early February highs there, 41.95. We still have that unfilled gap from back in August, I think that's a magnet, 42.28. These are some of your symmetry moves. Um, and, you know, some potential targets also would be around the 42.50 area and 4,300 area around the 61.8 fib. Okay. I think those are potentially doable in April. Next. Chapter 14, here's a half day chart, 195 minute. So you can see the little inverse head and shoulder pattern Steve discussed from the weekend, the neckline, which we took out last week, took out these other trend lines. Today we tagged the upper channel line, resistance. We're looking for some sort of pullback in here, but again, we view, we're looking, we favor a higher low and then another push. Next, chapter 15. Here's that two hour chart that I showed. Again, this is clearly a wave three. There's no MACD divergence here. So I'm looking for a pullback if we get one over the next day or two, uh, be in some sort of wave three or wave four buying opportunity. Next, chart 16 is another two hour chart. This shows you a symmetry. You can see we're getting close to an initial symmetry target here. Again, symmetry, just simply measuring this initial move, adding it to here. We're pretty close. It would measure to about 4140. So if we get a little upside tomorrow morning, that could be an area to watch for a reversal. Next. Chapter 17, here's the SPY two-hour chart. Again, similar view as I just showed in the index. Next. Chapter 18, here's a 60-minute uh, view of SPY. You can see that same channel. A little bit of RSI divergence now showing up here. Nothing on the MACD, of course. Next. Chapter 19, here's a 15-minute chart. Remember last week I talked about the support of this channel which we held, that was clearly a good buying opportunity. We've rallied up near the upper portion of the channel. Next, chapter 20, here's the four time frames we like to look at with those custom indicators. Again, on the daily, we cleared that ATR last week. So that's a positive. We got a little DeMarc 9 on a 195 minute. We're still holding up here. The moving average ribbon's getting a bit wide here. You could see the indicator I talked about that measures that is also over it's about 80 percent so it is getting a bit wide here we may need to consolidate um, again support on the ATR on all the other time frames by the way guys this is an education you know the cycle indicators here this is your cycle resistance whenever you break over a cycle resistance that's bullish just like this consider that a breakout next moving on to the triple Q's Chapter 21, here's the triple Qs, basically an inside day. So no over, no changes. That's your last higher low there. Could use that as some sort of stop. Next. Chapter 22, here's a two-hour review. Again, we broke out of this channel. That was an opportunity to go long back here, which we talked about. Um, it's similar to area to where the KISS trend system went long. And we're simply uptrending in another channel. Next. Chapter 23, here's the the uh, four time frames we like to follow. Um, again, we're moving average ribbons a bit stretched on that half day, just like on the S&P. You can see here the the uh, dr the width, the normalized width is 82%. We have a resistance cycle here on the 130 minute, which we're struggling a little bit at. Next, chapter 24, here's IWM small caps again. They were just essentially a flat day, black candle. Right at the 200-day moving average here, you have the broken uptrend line here. That's resistance. So, you know, to me, IWM was a pretty easy long down here. You had a nice RSI divergence. Ribbon was very stretched. But up in here is probably an area to make, take some profits. Could be, struggle here with this trend line. Again, here's the RSI trend lines. Like I said, they've all given nice signals, just like this gave a nice buy signal about a week ago right here on this trend line break. So that does it on the major indexes, guys. We'll see what happens tomorrow. 
Futures are essentially um, pretty flat tonight at the moment. Next. Moving on to some indicators, sharper 25, here's the VIX that continues to melt down. Now, what I'm not showing here is the VIX has a DeMarc, um, had a DeMarc 9 reading on month, on Friday. Today is a DeMarc 10. So it is getting a bit oversold too. Now, the, the Bollinger Band is pretty still pretty far down here. Um, one thing I've noticed, you see how wide the Bollinger Bands are from the top to the bottom? One thing we may need to see to get these Bollinger Bands to start working, you know, contracting a bit is a little bounce in the VIX, which would cause that lower Bollinger Bands to come in, would cause the upper Bollinger Bands to come in, you know, and then the VIX could come down again. That would probably correspond with that fourth wave I talked about on the S&P. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Next. Chart number 26, here's a 60 minute chart of the VIX, kind of a little wedge here with some divergence to monitor. Next. Chart number 27, here's the bullish percent S&P index with the uh, plotted as a area and with the nine and 20 moving averages. And you can see this crossed over these moving averages last week for a buy signal in the S&P. Again, it's not perfect, but it's overall, it's been a pretty good little indicator here in a nice little system. Next, chart 28, here's the S&P advanced decline line versus the small cap advanced decline. As you know, I talked about this early last week, this divergence that was between the two, just like we had back there in December that produced a rally, and lo and behold, this produced a rally. Next, chart 29, here's the, uh, this shows you the breath thrust, and we almost officially had a breath thrust here, so this came from under 0.4 to over 0.615 in about 10 days. So you need a reading it within nine days. Pretty close, but you did have quite a bit of breath on that last upside movement. Now, these breath move, thrust type moves hasn't been great signals, you could see. They've been, over the last year they produced highs, but um, still, it is something to be aware of. Next. Chapter 30, here's the S&P with the NIMO. So the NIMO cl has closed outside its upper Bollinger Bands for three days. Today, it finally closed back inside. But don't think of that as bearish, guys. You can see in the past, when it goes outside its upper Bollinger Bands after coming off a oversold condition, many times price still rallies for two or three weeks. You know, not back here in uh, the June time frame, but you know, some of these past ones, you know, it started a rally. Now, usually you, you pull back for a couple days when it was out, it's outside its Bollinger Bands. You can see just like here, it's outside its bands. It goes up, pulls back, but then goes higher for two or three weeks. So I think we could see something similar here. Next, chapter 31, here's a nice chart. It has both the NASDAQ the NAMO and the NIMO, so you can see both of them. The NAMO was also outside its upper Bollinger Bands on Friday. By the way, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, the nice thing about having a membership here is we give you the live chart URLs to these nice indicators and all these charts. So instead of just viewing a static image with the URL, you can pull it up on your side and see what it looks like anytime you want or save it in stock charts or whatever you wanna do. So that's a benefit of adding a membership to Breakpoint Trades, is we give you these chart URLs. Next, chapter 32, here's the NASDAQ with the 52-week highs and lows and the difference. Just pointed out here, the difference is getting near zero again. Sometimes that's an important area. It was last year. Every time it got near there, we had sell-offs. Now this year has been different. It went above zero and stayed there for a while, but it is approaching zero, so be aware of that. Next, chapter 33, here's another thing I'm just monitoring. So the NASDAQ's basically back to the highs here, but the new 52-week highs, it's quite a bit lower, so you have a divergence setting up there. But I'm not worried about that right now, I'm just pointing it out. All right, let's move on and look at some of the market sectors. Chapter 33, here's healthcare, we've been talking about this, 
Healthcare broke over its downtrend line on Friday. Big follow through today. Next. Chapter 35, financials. Again, I talked about this having five waves down, and it's been unwinding. So it's a little over the 20-day moving average now. And again, we have a fifth wave low here. So I do think it will work higher, but, you know, they, these things did get pretty washed out and had some damage done to it. Next. Chapter 36, here's the banks. So they're still struggling here a bit, not surprising. Still unable to get over this trend line and 20-day moving average. Obviously, that divergence on the RSI wide ribbon, you know, we did get a nice bounce from that. Next. Chapter 37, XLE Energy. Big gap here, not surprised. Gapped right over the downtrend line. That's positive. Could be a breakaway gap. Um, you know, again, predicated on the Saudi oil production cut. Next. Chapter 38, here's oil services gapped as well, though a black candle. Not as nice looking to me as the XLE. Next. Chapter 39, here's the weekly view of XLE. It held that weekly uptrend line, as you know, a couple weeks ago. Next. Moving on to commodities, chart number 40, here's DBC, up nicely today, especially with the crude oil. Has a potential wedge here forming now. Keep be aware of that. I still think commodities are overall in a consolidation in a longer-term bull market. Maybe that put in a final bottom finally. It's definitely been consolidating for, um, what, 10 months now at least. Next. Chart number 41, uh, crude oil, weekly. Up six over 6% six today. Remember, it found support at that 200-week moving average, which is always an important moving average. Next. Chapter 42, here's the daily view. Again, um, nice gap up. Next. Chapter 43, OVX. This is the cr volatility index of crude oil. Guys, this buy signal worked out fantastic. Again, the rules are right here. And again, if you're a member of Breakpoint Trades, you can get the live chart URL to this so you can use it on your own. But buy signals occur whenever this is outside its Bollinger Bands and closes back inside. You can see that got you in in crude oil at the bottom. And the, the last sell signal got you up here near that last high. It was below its lower Bollinger Bands. So great signal this was. Next, Chapter 44, Exxon Mobil, um, one of the stars in the energy area. By the way, guys, something like uh, oil services or XLE, Exxon Mobil and Chevron represent something like 43% of those indexes. So if you don't, you know, instead of X owning XLE Energy, just own those two stocks. Next. Chapter 45, natural gas, again, unable to put in a sustained bounce. Last week it tried, but again, until it breaks over the 90 EMA, you know, it is downtrending, guys. This is a very tough thing to trade, okay? Next. Chapter 46, there's a 60-minute view of boil. That's the uh, two-time ETF. Going to monitor this little pattern. I want to see a break from this before I attempt the long. Next. Chapter 47, copper, down today from this channel. Next, chapter 48, there's the daily view. Again, nothing's changed really since last week. Next, chapter 49, DBA, nice rally from that divergent low back up here. The weekly looks pretty decent as well. I don't have a chart in that here today. Next, chapter 50, TLT, it did indeed find support at these moving, major moving averages trying to break up here. In case this starts running up, I added a possible symmetry target based on this last move. Would measure up around 113 or so. Remember, as TLT goes up, 10-year treasury yields go down. Next, chapter 51, there's the 10-year treasury yield weekly view. You know, down obviously this week so far. Still in this channel. MACD is back to zero here, so be aware of that. Next, Chapter 52, Bitcoin, so far, mostly going sideways, struggling a little bit at this resistance supply zone. Next, Chapter 53, Mara, 
was a nice long last week. You got a higher low there to use as a swing stop. Right now, it's struggling a little bit at its 200-day moving average, which is to be expected. But otherwise, it chart looks just fine to me. Next. Chapter 54, U.S. dollar, again, continues working down. So, you know, as this goes, if this goes lower, if it starts, if it can't try to, if it can't break out of the channel here and continues lower, that'll put further um, pressure to the upside on the precious metals. Next, moving on to the precious metals, Chapter 55, gold. Again, the previous week, it, filled this uh, target zone, consolidated, but I said it until it breaks that 90 EMA on a closing basis, it is uptrending strongly and that remains. So has a cup and handle look to it here. Next, chapter 56, there's the 60 minute view. You can see this coiling pattern. Here I added another trend line to monitor. Also added a trend lines on the RSI 14 as a for a coil as well. Next. Chapter 57, here's gold daily. Again, you can see it's in this little tight pennant type pattern. This measures the GDX GLD ratio, which still continues to push higher. So stocks are still outperforming. So that's still a positive. Next. Chapter 58, GDX, gold miners, testing the January high. So a little double top resistance area. Now, guys, the best thing, in my opinion, instead of GDX breaking out here, would be for it to pull back a little bit and consolidate and then break out because then you have kind of a cup and handle potential. All right. If it breaks out from here, then it has potential to, you know, get losing train of my train of thought for the words, but, you know, kind of peter out, essentially. So I would rather see it now consolidate here sideways, pull back, form some kind of handle. And, uh, but clearly, really strong trend. This was a great long down here. You can see, of course, the RSI trend line break on the, on the RSI gave a great signal, just like it gave a great signal back here in February. Next. Chapter 59, here's another daily chart. <laughs> This one has the GDX GLD ratio. Again, you can see the trend line break in the ratio. Got would have got you in here. Not at that low, but not bad. And just like the sell signal got you out there in actually it triggered in late January. But here, guys, just simply trail your stops up. Just like I show here. Trail your stops up, maybe below the nine EMA. A little below it, I would say, because you can have a little under, you know, quick candle wick moves below it and then recovery so we'll see guys we're right at resistance here i would prefer now to see it pull back go sideways before trying to break out next chapter 60 here's the kiss trend system for gdx it went long back there in earlier march right there march 13th i think and you now have five it's the system's a bit of a raise it stop five times the current stop is at 30.1 so it's done its job, just trailing the stops up. Again, you can see how the system's done. It's not always, it's not perfect, but overall it does a pretty good job keeping you in uptrends, keeping you out of trouble. Next, chapter 61, here's the two hour view. Again, we still are holding this uptrend line. We do have this divergence we're monitoring, so just be aware of that. That hasn't negated. Um, keep an eye on this GDX GLD trend line. Next, let's look at some individual names in this area. So, Charber 62, USAU, one of the gold stocks. And this thing has been just on fire. Had a huge move last week, huge move today, up over 14%. And that was with it well off the highs. Next, Charber 63, OR, was one of my picks a few weeks back over this trend line, and it produced, proved to be a fantastic swing there. Again, precious metal stock. Next, Chapter 64, DRD, another one of these. It's played out beautifully. Next, Chapter 65, FNV, another uh, one of the gold stocks. Was consolidating nice here. Big pop today. Next, Chapter 66, EGO, another one that I showed a couple weeks ago. Grinds higher. Next, Chapter 67, Goro. Remember this one I showed? In my last weekend newsletter, we had a nice coil, 
clearly is playing out. 50-day moving average here would be your first target. Next, Trevor 68, BTG, another gold stock. I posted this today. Kind of has a high and tight bull flag look to it here. Next, Trevor 69. And the next few are some stocks I'm going to monitor that are at pre recent highs. Could be areas for them to cons consolidate, but I think they'll eventually take them out. So RGLD, you can see it's right at this resistance. Next, Trevor 70, HL, Hecla Mining, another one right at the resistance from January here. Next, Trevor 71, KGC, same deal. And finally, Trevor 72, IAG, another one that's nearing the January highs. Okay, so those are a few to monitor if we do get some consolidation. All right, guys, moving on now to the last part of the newsletter, regular stocks, trade ideas. So Trevor 73, here's Apple. This continues to trend higher. This is another reason a few weeks back why I was bullish on the market. Apple looked positive, looked like it wanted to go higher, and that's what it's been doing. Here it added a major move. It measures up to about 170. Next, Trevor 74, here's the KISS trend system for Apple, and you can see it's done a good job. It went long there in... Um, mid-January, and you got a bunch of STS higher low stops in place. None of them have been hit, so would have kept you in and kept you protected. Next, Trevor 75, NVIDIA, same deal. You know, got in there in early January and has been raising its stop all along. Okay. The um, big tech Kept stocks are what have been leading, as you know. Next, Trevor 76, Fang, I mean, um, Google, Alphabet, whatever, um, still looks positive to me. Next, Trevor 77, Roblox. Here's one that broke out today. Steve posted it early in the day, so some of you may own it already. But it still looks good to me. I think you could still buy it. And um, this would be a potential measured move up there at 52. Next, Trevor 78, APLS was a long idea of mine last week. It broke its trend line there, chopped around. If you bought it, congrats. Huge gap today on news, but big move. Next, Trevor 79, AI. You know, AI has been all the range. I gave this as a long idea back here in uh, mid March, opened around this 22 area. And then I gave it another long in this flag so it's been one hell of a trader again the ribbon's pretty wide here it may likely do for some consolidation next jabber 80 here's the daily view again as you know this stuff is super hot and i do think this stuff ai will have for profound changes in our society and many industries so longer term this is an area to focus on next here's some other in uh AI type stocks, path. Next, Trevor 82, here's another one, big bear. And of course, NVIDIA is a big in AI play, but it's obviously not a pure AI play. Next, Trevor 83, following up on other ones, SPNT. This is a long idea from last week, it's obviously played out nicely. Next, Trevor 84, PLX, another one from two weeks ago. It broke out. Here's an example, guys. It broke out of the coil, pulled back, held that trend line as support. Remember, in technical analysis, when you break out and back test broken trend line and becomes resistance, that's your super low risk long to buy right there. Put a stop, you know, right at that higher low. Very objective. And those are your those are really your best uh, risk reward trades. Next. Trevor 85, AQN was a long idea of mine a week ago. Played out nicely out of that base. Pulling back here the last couple days, but it's on light volume, so it still looks fine. Next, Trevor 86, BBIO, recent idea. And this is pulling back on light volume. It may be trying to flag here. Next, Trevor 87, Baba. The um, Chinese names have been pulling back a little bit, but on light volume, that was a big volume move up. So again, it could be trying to flag here. Next, Trevor 88, Tesla had a big move out of this little pattern I mentioned last week, but if you didn't take some profits, it's pulled all the way back. Now, it's testing these confluence of trend lines. 
So in my opinion, some sort of stop right below that trend line, kind of like I show here, would make sense if you still want to keep it. If it gets much below that, you, you don't want to be in it. Next, Charber 89, Bank of America. Someone asked me about this. Still hasn't been able to really get breaking out. of. Hasn't been able to take out this resistance. I'd probably put a stop right around here. And um, let's see if it can break through this resistance or not. Next, Charber 90, um, LRCX, long idea from last week. It's still valid. Next, Charber 70, 91, first solar. This to me looks kind of potentially like a short below this area with a stop just above here. Next, Charber 92, MGNI, little um, pennant pattern here, long. Next, Charber 93, OSG, little breakout idea. Next, Charber 94, ATEC, another potential breakout idea over here. All right, guys, let's see what happens tomorrow and have a wonderful evening. Take care.